This is the only cup that allows you to drink from an open container in zero G. But how does it work and why do we need a special shape to drink without gravity? In order to drink from a cup, we rely on the fact that gravity is always pulling things down. So if we want to take a drink, we just have to tip the cup and the liquid pours into our mouth. We can drain the whole cup into our mouth just by tipping the cup more and more. <sighs> this is all thanks to gravity, but what if there were no gravity? Well, if there's no gravity, that means that there's no down or up. So when you tilt the cup, nothing happens. The water doesn't flow into your mouth. This is the problem of astronauts on the International Space Station. Since they're in orbit, they're continually in zero G. But if they have this cup, then it's no longer a problem. The liquid will climb up the pointy end of the cup and be ready to take a sip. We often take for granted how almost every fluid system we use would completely fail in space. For example, the sink works because drops fall and bubbles rise. Without this, we wouldn't have a working drain. All the pipes lead out of your house simply because they're flowing downhill and gravity pulls the liquid away. So without gravity, everything becomes much more complicated. Take the toilet, for example. On Earth, a toilet costs a few hundred dollars. But in space, the current ISS toilet costs $19 million. This is because of all the necessary functions to get waste from your body to a storage container without gravity. So recently, NASA scientists and astronauts have been coming up with some really cool designs that achieve some of the results without expensive equipment. Usually on the ISS, because of the no gravity problem, astronauts drink from a bag with a straw. This works, but drinking from a straw gets old after a while. It's a different experience to drink a sip through a straw versus a cup. When we suck it through the straw, we don't get the smell of the drink next to our nose, so we miss out on some of the flavor. So how does this new space cup work? Well, it relies on the surface tension and cohesion of the liquid to the cup walls. Normally, in order to pull the liquid up, the cracks or holes need to be very small. For example, a paper towel works because of tiny little spaces in between the fibers. And in this capillary tube here, you can see how high the liquid rests naturally depending on the tube size. But if you aren't fighting against gravity, you don't need a tiny crack or a hole. You just need a slightly pointy section. So since this side of the cup has this sharp crevice, the liquid will naturally climb up the crack. But notice it isn't doing it now. That's because it has to fight against gravity right now. If we take the gravity force away, then we should be able to see the water climb up the crack. So how do we turn off gravity? Well, we do it the same way the ISS does. We just drop it. When something is in free fall, the gravity force drops to zero. That's literally why the ISS doesn't feel gravity, because they're in free fall as well. They're just moving really fast sideways so they never hit the Earth. They just fall around it. So let's drop our cup and see if we can see the liquid climb it. Two, three, drop. Whoa, it worked. So in this case, the water actually climbed out of the cup. But if we had a longer time, then the surface tension of the water would have pulled it back into the cup. With dropping, we can only see it for a short time. But you can see the cup in action in this video here, with a real astronaut in space. It's so cool. So now we have cups that work in space. If you want to read more about the Space Cup but don't have time to sit down and read a technical paper, then you should try my new favorite app that can read technical papers called Listening. I read a lot of research papers, but I'm also on the go a lot, so I use Listening to be able to listen to the technical papers when I can't read them. The present invention provides a beverage cup. Listening is specifically made for technical papers, so it's able to read math equations and even tables. It knows how to pronounce technical terms that would normally be difficult for an AI voice. A CAQ to the power of 17 yielded hypertrophic amboid shapes with GBP2 expression. And you can even choose from whatever type of voice you want to listen to. It breaks up the papers into digestible chapters for you, and you can even add notes. You can upload PDFs of the papers you want to read or just put a link to the website. You can use it as an app or a website. So if you want to save time by listening to good research on the go, then go to listening.com or click the link in my description and try it out for free now. And thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.